In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can get started with using Jupyter Notebook in a matter of minutes. So the very first step is to either download PyCharm or to download Anaconda. Now, both of these are completely free, although the PyCharm alternative is going to cost money for the professional version, and that will allow you to use Jupyter Notebook inside PyCharm. But to get started, we're going to download Anaconda and you can choose whether to download that for MacBook or Windows. And you can do that for free at anaconda.com slash download. But as soon as you download it, you should get a window like this. There's not really any setup to be done. It might take a moment to download it. But as soon as you open it for the first time, you should get a window such as this one. And it's going to give you a lot of tools that you can use for data science. But what we're going to do is open up the terminal. And here we will type in Jupyter notebook and that's going to start a Jupyter notebook for us and I can't remember if you have to install it here or not but if you have an install button here install it first otherwise just use the command or you can even tap on launch anyways the first thing it's going to do is take us to this tree of all of our directories so as you can see I have my desktop my documents and so on in this example, I'm just going to tap on my desktop and we're going to create a new notebook here. So here you can tap on new and then click on Python 3. And this will start a new notebook for us. And you can even give it a title at the top. We can say notebook example. And we will be inside our first notebook. So the first thing we're going to do inside this notebook is document a line of code. So we're going to tap on this tab here and we're going to change it to Markdown. So now everything we enter inside this box is going to be considered Markdown. So we can say first program and we will add a description that says this is our first program that prints a message. So that's the documentation we're going to add. But to actually execute this Markdown so we can see it, you're going to have to tap on run and then it's going to execute it and leave the message. But at any point during this program, you can double click on it and edit it and rerun it. Now we're back inside the code mode. So we have something that says in and we have some empty square brackets. And the empty square brackets are going to contain how many times we ran this code. So for example, if we type in print hello world, we can now tap on run and it's going to execute it. And it's going to create a new line for us immediately after. If you want to change something here, you can say print hello world, print second world. And if you run this again, it will say we ran this block two times, but now we have this output here. Then we can add some more documentation. We can say markdown, this is some more documentation. Here is one item, here is another item. And I believe you can hold down shift plus enter to execute it and you will get some more documentation for the next code that you decide to use. Now, the pros of using Anaconda instead of PyCharm is that you have a lot of data science packages installed by default. So for example, if you want to import pandas as PD and you tap on shift plus enter, we can now use pandas in our project without having to install it. And here we can just print PD. And you'll see that we have this module imported from pandas. Now at any moment, if you don't like what a line does, for example, if we type in print bad code, if at any moment you have this line of code and you don't want it anymore, you can tap on the box here and you'll notice that we're going to be in this blue mode. And this blue mode is command mode. Once you tap on a box, it turns green and that means you are in editor mode, which means you can edit code or you can add some text that is editor mode. But tap on the box and get into the command mode and double tap on D and that will delete a line. In command mode, you can also tap on Z and it will undo the delete. To add a box above a block in command mode, you can tap on A and it will add one above. Now we're going to tap on this one that says import pandas as PD. And in command mode, we're going to tap on B and it's going to add a box below. So those are just some of the shortcuts that you can use with Jupyter Notebook. But for more details about all the shortcuts, tap on this keyboard here, and it's going to give you all the commands for Jupyter Notebook. And you'll notice that there's a separate one for command mode. 
and they will have these parentheses that say command mode. Otherwise, it will say edit. As you become more proficient with this, you'll start moving around with the keyboard. So up and down arrow keys, go up and down. If you tap on enter, you enter editing mode. If you tap on escape, you exit editing mode. You can also move blocks up and down using these arrow keys. So if you want to move print up, just tap on this arrow here and it will move it closer to pandas. So we don't have all these random lines in between them. Also, you might notice that we have this text here that says last checkpoint, and it says it auto saved three minutes ago. But at any point, you can also manually save it by holding command or control plus S. And then it's going to say that a checkpoint was created and that we managed to save it. And I should have mentioned, but whatever kind of expression you enter inside here will be evaluated and returned as the output. So now if we have this and we tap in shift plus enter, it will say out and we'll get two. So those were the basics of how you can use Jupyter Notebook. Now we're going to log out and stop this session. So we're going to say exit out of the page. We successfully logged out. And I did mention that you could do this in PyCharm. And the reason I would recommend using PyCharm is that you get a lot more powerful tools, a lot more hints, and it's just dedicated to doing things with Python. So just like with the web version, we can now run this inside PyCharm. And actually, you're not going to get this by default. So to get it, you're going to have to open up PyCharm Professional Edition, and you're going to want to create a new file. And you will see that they will have a Jupyter Notebook. And here you can call it whatever you want. You can say New Notebook, and it will give you this page that looks just like the web version, except I'm using dark mode, which is a lot more pleasant on my eyes. And it has all the features that I love that come with PyCharm. So here we can type in something such as import pandas as pd. And we don't have that installed. So here we can type in install package pandas. So just like that, we can now run this. And it's going to start a Jupyter server. And that's usually where it hosts the notebook. And the first time you run it, it might take a while. It just takes some time to perform all of this. So you're going to have to be patient maybe for a minute or so. But in the meanwhile, we can add a new cell. And as you can see, you still have the green mode and the blue mode for editing mode and command mode. In command mode, you can tap A and it will add a new row above, or you can tap B and it will add a new row below. But now pandas was imported, so we can do something such as data equals one, two, three. And we can say PD dot series, and the data is going to equal the data. So we have all the help from PyCharm that we would usually get, except inside a Jupyter Notebook. And if we run that, we're going to get this graph here, which is a series from Panda. And at any time you want to see this in the browser, you can do that by tapping on this small earth over here and it will take us to the web version that we were just using. So, I mean, it's up to you which one you use. Of course, you don't have to use money on PyCharm to do this. I probably will use the PyCharm version because it's so much more pleasant on my eyes, but I also really do like the web version of Jupyter Notebook. So that was pretty much all you need to know about getting started with Jupyter Notebook. The rest is for you to explore and play around with, such as you do have this button here that runs everything. And if you want to run everything over and over, you can tap on that. That exists in PyCharm and that also exists in Jupyter Notebook. Here it's going to restart and run all cells, which is perfectly fine. We now rerun everything and it worked just as it did before. But anyways, that's actually all I wanted to cover in today's lesson. So as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.